All right, so moving on. We also have another way of actually sort of creating our paths inside code. We have a sort of a sort of uh, what we call it is sort of inline way. This is like called and oftentimes it's called a ternary operator in other programming languages and it's here in JavaScript as well. So we're gonna show you how to make that so basically we're gonna show you how to make something like this in one line. I mean it's not it's really looks really cool it looks really technical make you makes you look like a smarter programmer. <laughs> That's what I use it to make it look smart actually. But um, sometimes it's not recommended because it can things can get complicated in if and else statements. But it's often good if it's something really simple and you just want to get get something really simple out of it. But let's show you that right now. So let's get to cut to the chase. So seven six point five. So we have some sort of variable, and then the ternary operator. What it does, is going to do is that it's going to return the result of an if else statement as a value and so you can store that value to a variable so let's see that so a ternary operator goes like this ternary operation i should say so we have a condition so let's say weight is greater than 100 and you have a question mark so you're like asking a question is weight greater than 100 and then you say then you have after that you have the left part which is if it's true you're going to return too heavy and then you have a uh, the colon which means you're out going to the or uh, the else situation so it, i can carry this all right so what i'm doing here is that i'm checking if weight this variable right here is greater than 100 it's basically done with the in parentheses, the statement is in parentheses, followed by a question mark. And then you have your true statement, followed by a colon, then a false statement. So whatever happens when it's false. This side is whatever happens when it's true, and the other side is whatever happens when it's false. And the result, either this side or this side, will be stored into this variable called ternary. Ternary, ternary yeah. All right, I think that's how you spell it, but I could be wrong. All right, ternary. All right, so we're going to see our answer. And it says, I can carry this. So let's make it now, let's make it 101. And it says too heavy. So you can see the ternary operator stores our value like that. All right, so it's moving on. We are not limited to only conditional statements themselves. We can also use literal values as variables so basically what that will mean is that it'll check the boolean value of a variable so let's have an undefined variable of our check and we're going to say if check and then it's then we're gonna have not we'll just say um do something we're not going to do anything here because we know um, this is going to actually turn out to be false, so we're going to have else statement, and we're going to say document, not document, um, uh, console log, and we're going to say var check is empty. So what we're saying here is that we're checking the var, the variable check. When we put the variable or value by itself, it is checking whether or not it is defined or or it is defined. So when we do it like this, we're saying if check is has some sort of value, if it's not null, which is the Boolean value true, then you do something. Then otherwise, it'll say is empty. And let's see the results of that. And it says it's empty because we just defined it, but we didn't assign a value to it. So you can also do it like this and oftentimes if operations with if conditions like conditional statements are done this way where we have a variable that's given some sort of input based on like a web like a, on a web um a website's forms being sent or something like that and if it checks if it's filled out or not and if it's not filled out then it gives some sort of error and if it is filled out it processes it for example and we can also use the not operator 
So the exclamation point. This means now checks. This means now checks. This, this means that we're checking if it is empty. And now we're gonna say console. We'll do. We'll move this up over here now. We're gonna select all that. Got that. Paste. Let's say do something. Because we know. Okay. Because we know this is gonna be true now. All right. So what I'm saying here is that check if the variable check is empty, if it's undefined, if it equals a null. That's basically this non-operator means for a variable. It checks if it's empty. With null, which is a Boolean value, empty or null or undefined is the Boolean, va va uh, Boolean value false. And it gives you empty. And even you could do zero. Let's check if zero does that too. And we're going to refresh. And actually, zero itself is the, just so you know, this is a trick. Don't compare with zero because zero itself is a number which is not null. But if you do undefined, so like this, undefined, let's do check equals undefined. And you get the var check is empty. So doing this not like this is equal to what we just did. And doing check like this is equal to sort of undefined, let's say undefined. Is basically, so what we did with just check, just checking the variable check is like doing this statement right here. And we'll see that we get the same results. There we go. Save that. Refresh. And you see that we get the same results as as the beginning, as this as this one. All right. So that's that. So to conclude this section, we discussed if and else statements, right? So this allows us to make sort of paths in our code based on if a condition is true or false. But what if we want to have multiple conditions? So like if this condition is false, I want to check another condition and not just go straight to false. For that, we have the if else statement. So we write if, let's say if, we have if else. Not that, I mean, not that. Um, else if, sorry, I'm, I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of another programming language. Uh, so we have if, so we have our if statement if, then we have else if, the else if statement, I'm so sorry, the else if statement means that, okay, so let me write this out, else, all right, so what this is going to do is it's going to check condition one, if that turns out to be false, it's going to check condition two, and if both of those turn out to be false, we do condition three, so you're sort of making paths in your code, if you understand what I'm saying, so Let's do an example, a simple example right here, just to demonstrate this. Um, so we're going to have a variable called our speech, just something really simple. It's going to be hello. And then we're going to check, we're going to assume that the, the input is okay. We don't have to convert to any lowercase or uppercase. So we're assuming here everything's all fine and dandy. So we're going to check here if speech equals hello. Uh, I forgot, I should put an exclamation point. Yeah, to make it more friendly. So, or, oops, I put insert, turn on insert. Or speech equals hi. So if it's a greeting, we have a, some sort of code to run. And we're going to say, I don't know, we're going to say the console is going to tell us good day. So it's going to say, it's going to give us some sort of greeting if it gets the input high. And then we're going to check another condition. So let's say, okay, if we don't want to say hello, we're just going to go straight directly to a question. So speech is going to say, how are you? So we're getting a question. And then the console, the, the web page is going to say, I am fine. How about you? Okay, and then if those conditions are don't check out, if they're, 
turn out to be false. So if the user didn't say hi, hello, hi, or how are you, it's just going to say, I do not understand. And you're going to see that it says, good day. Well, let's change it now. So we're assuming there's some sort of input. And then the user is going to say, hi. And it says, good day again. But then we're just going to have it blank. Let's have it blank. Oops, I didn't save it. Oh, I made a mistake here. So here's a good trick I think is a good a good um, sort of pothole or a, a pitfall to be aware of. If you do not put the equals equal sign, you'll get some sort of weird results. You'll get weird results if you do it like this, in which I did. And you will want to refrain from that. So keep, like you just saw, I made this empty, but I got the second else if I got the second result. So that's such a good pitfall. I kind of... I learned things, uh, so just whatever. Just remember, that's a pitfall. Keep that in mind. Keep the two left and right, the two equal signs together. All right. And it says, I do not understand because I didn't say anything in the criteria of hello, hi, or how are you. And then we're going to say, how are you? How are you? And you get... I'm fine. How about you? So, to recap what I've what I've been doing for the past couple of minutes, we can have else if statements in order to make even more to check even more conditions in our code to be specific about checking conditions in our code. You can so you can have, you can basically have even more pads in your code, like else you could have even more else ifs. You can have a lot more else if as, as long as you can keep them as diverse as possible. And the else statement, else statement will be, the else condition will be executed when everything else turns out to be false. So check this one, false, check this one, false, check this one, false. It'll be else. But if one of these turns out to be true, it'll run that one. And if all a lot of them turn out to be true, the first one that is checked out to be true will be executed. So let's let's actually see that. So we're going to have another variable. Let's see. Let's can have we're going to have speech 1 and we're going <clears> to <throat> excuse me. We're going to have hello and we're going to have speech we're going to have speech 2 equals uh, how are you? And notice here now what I'm going to do here I'm going to do speech 2 I'm going to do speech one and speech one here. We're going to get rid of this. So both of these will turn out to be true, but you'll see that good day. Oops, actually, it's the last one. Sorry, I'm mixing up my programming languages again. What we get is we get the last one. Um, we get the last if con else the if condition that it turns out to be true. Since both of them are true, in this case then the last one will be turn out to be true. And actually, let's test this. Why don't we test that? So, yep, just to confirm. So, like, maybe this one, even in the complexity, even if this one's simpler and this one's more complex, the last if condition will turn out to be executed if, there, if more than one is right. So, but if more than one is false, if all of them are false, then the next one will be checked or otherwise else is executed whenever code is in here. So I hope this helped you out. I hope you learned something here and we hope to see you next time.